start. Good morning, all of you. It is lovely to have uh, all of you here on this lovely Friday morning. Uh, so, sir, good morning. It is a, indeed a pleasure to have you with us here on this uh, live session on Facebook. Uh, to begin with, I would just like to give uh, all of you who have joined a small introduction about uh, Dr. Sridhar Ganpati. So, he is a very well known uh, pediatrician and neonatologist from Mumbai and he is a medical director at uh, Janani Children's Hospital. So he is not just a very well known doctor here in Mumbai but also in the Indian uh, doctor circle and the international circle as well where he also is invited to a lot of uh, Indian and international symposia as an honorary speaker. And he talks on various topics like um, diaper dermatitis, acute diarrhea, uh, antibiotic use in children, pediatric sleep is one of his the important topics that is close to his heart. So it's, it's a pleasure to have you with us sir. Um, as a young adult and uh, not a mother yet, so I have this one question which always keeps going at the back of my mind is do we really need diapers? Oh yes, it, it, it's all necessity. You see. Necessity is so important today. Mm -hmm. In fact, uh, once a baby is born, it's all feed, burp, sleep, pee, poop, cry and you have to be a mother to experience it. And every peep and poop makes the child cry, wakes the child up, wakes up the family inadequate sleep makes them extremely irritable. And that's how the diaper came into practice. So it is a necessity. It's uh, more of a perceived convenience. Though now we have started thinking about the ecological disaster that is causing because it brings about so much of landfill waste and you leave behind the shit in the nature and it is causing a problem. But the, uh, the convenience that it provides to the mother is something which is uh, not measurable. Yeah. So, uh, sir, now that we see that it is necessary, there are so many options available in the market. So, how do we choose and on what yeah, parameters? I think I forgot to add one more thing here. Is, uh, we now have all working parents. We have caretakers at home, ayahs and uh, maids. We have daycare centers taking care of kids. So diaper is a matter of convenience, it's here to stay. Uh, we have so many in the market that it's very confusing today and we need to know what to buy, how to buy, and what is good. If you take the grandmother's uh, theory, it's the old dhotis and saris that were used as nappies. Then we had the langots, mm -hmm. then we had the main langots which are triangular with the loops, then we had the uh, hooks, then came the velcro, so there was innovation and now we have the disposable diapers. We have the three generations with all possible things in it. And now we have come to an era where we have gone back to cloths. It's called the advanced cloth diapers. So uh, when it comes to diapers, one thing that I really uh, hear around is the problem of rashes. So is, is there a price that we are paying to this convenience that we are getting, this comfort that we are getting, uh, rashes, is there a contributing factor apart from the diaper, actual use of a diaper, are, are there other contributing factors to this? Yes, see the first and foremost is we tend to westernize very fast, not knowing the consequences. Uh, our climate is not conducive really to diapers in the sense that humidity, warmth, heat, moisture, they all play a big role. That's why cloth scores over paper. That's how it is. Now the price that you pay for comfort is what we are seeing in day-to-day -day practice is we are seeing a lot of diaper dermatitis. A type of rash in the gluteal, perineal or the crotch area mm -hmm. which is extremely troublesome to treat. And the contributing factor is not just the occlusive diaper. It is the soap that you use, the wipes that you use, the powder that you put. And your anatomy, you have creases, you have, uh, the anatomy is such that that is a place where there is so much of friction, maceration, moisture. So diaper dermatitis is one, meatal stenosis is another, pigmentation because of friction, delayed toilet training, delayed locomotion. And there are certain questionable things, increased heat in the scrotal area, yes, fertility issues. And we also see a lot of labial adhesions because of poor perineal hygiene, because of the use of diapers. What we try to do is, we try to cut cost. We put in a diaper and we assume it's as good as a sanitary pad, we put it in the morning and take it out in the evening. It's not so. My professor always used to teach me, it's like a password, you keep changing it, 
you do better. Okay. Exactly. Nice. And, and the biggest problem that we all forget is ecological problem. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's, a, it's a big problem because most of them are biodegradable. And even the biodegradable that hit the market basically require oxygen, moisture, and the right organisms in the soil to degrade that particular waste. So, uh, sir, we also have uh, some new mothers or would-be mothers joining this session. What would be the one, two, three, four points that you would recommend them so as to prevent uh, such kind of issues that you just stated? Give me from rations. Okay. Uh, see, when I go to buy a diaper, there are many issues. One is cost, second is convenience, third is comfort, and the last is my conscience. Fine. So, I, I would prefer the cloth because you try to put yourself in a baby's shoes and start thinking, would you like to be in an underpants which is made out of paper the whole day or which is made out of cloth? That's first. Second, yes, definitely cost. If you take cloth, they are reusable. And the sewage gets into the right place. Okay, it's, you don't discard it into the landfill. Okay, so you're not contaminating the ecology. You're not creating an ecological disaster which is sitting there to happen. Okay, that's number two. Cost-wise, if you see, because they are reusable, and you get one size that fits on, in the sense that they have snap buttons, the, the advanced cloth diapers, Right from the newborn period to the toddler period, you can adjust the buttons in such a way that they fit your child. So they are reusable, they are washable, the cost is only about one-fifth of what you spend on diapers. And the high-end diapers, which are uh, so um, heck in the sense that you have uh, wetness indicators, you have a, a, an aperture or a pore for the fecal crab, all those things are fine, but they cost so much. Our population or our class of people, I don't think, they, they are very conservative as far as money matters go. They want something that is cheap and best, which is extremely difficult. And they also want something which is time tested. So I think cloth is something that has come here at this day. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, so you mentioned that there are three options that, that are available. One are the traditional long boards as they call it. Then the disposable and then the advanced diapers, cloth diapers, which you are just mentioning. So, are there some pros and cons to each of these? I'm sure there might be, since we see all of them existing, coexisting in the market. Yeah, like I told you, first is cost. Okay. Okay. Cost wise, the cloth outscores the disposable. As far as uh, certain conditions are concerned, like for example, if I'm going to put my baby in a daycare center, they all prefer the disposable diapers because they have one maid servant or an ayah taking care of so many kids. So hygiene is an issue and they don't have time. But that's not an excuse not to use the cloth. Because ideally speaking, when you use a disposable diaper, the, the solid waste is supposed to be discarded in the potty hole. I mean, you are supposed to discard it in the toilet and then discard the disposable diaper, which we don't do. We just pack it and dump it into the solid waste, which is not the right way to do it. If you had a cloth diaper, you would be using a flush and you would be sending it to the place where it is treated and then uh, disposed off into the environment. So that's the right way to do it. And again, the cloth is very easy to carry. You get nowadays these packets in which you can keep them, the used ones, and they are absolutely odorless and odor free. Just like you have disposable diapers are very convenient for travel in the sense that uh, you just have to wear and you have to discard when they get soiled. Fine. So that's why there is a preference as far as travel and daycare center, they prefer the disposable ones to the advanced cloth care. But the biggest advantage of the cloth care is the incidence of rash is less. The way it fits in the crotch is so good that friction, pigmentation, comfort is very high. It really doesn't affect with the milestones like crawling, locomotion. That's a big advantage. So, uh, so you, uh, so during this discussion also, you have mentioned about the cost at the design thing. So, how exactly is the economy? Uh, yeah, so, Jata, can I just interrupt here? I, I forgot to tell you one thing mm -hmm. that just like we have regulatory bodies for everything, okay. even in the diaper industry, you need a regulatory body. Now, if you come to my place where I practice, that's in science. 
I have people who have a lungot in which they have a pad of paper which is called smokers, which you get in the local market, which is very cheap, which has chemicals, bleaches, and all possible things that you can think of, which could be toxic to the baby. We get very cheap, generic diapers, okay, half the cost of the, the branded ones. And again, we don't know what bleach is there, what chemical, what dyes, and they are the ones which cause maximum allergic reactions. Okay, so it's very essential that when you buy a diaper, because it's your baby, you need to buy something which is certified by a regulatory body, which says that this is safe for the baby who's wearing it. So the advanced cloth diapers come with the regulatory uh, seals, and I think that's why we prefer that. And it's almost one fifth the cost if you take the cost, which includes the visit to the doctor, the, the diaper creams that you use, and the number of diapers you change. And uh, anything else that you would, uh, you would uh, suggest in terms of uh, the care that they need to take while diapering? prevent crashes because we talked about other aspects but why diapering is there something uh, that they or how much how long do they need to keep a diaper very, very relevant question in the sense that uh, I, I do I do see this problem with all my parents they use diapers without knowing much about it now the problem is the groin the crotch area is such that it's extremely porous it's full of microbes it's one place where you can have problems and you can prevent these problems by using the right diapers. And in between diapering, just like in a cricket match, you have a timeout. You need to give timeout to the baby. You need to leave him naked for some time so that it is exposed to the outside air. And you are not supposed to use too much of soap. Please don't use soaps. Soaps are alkaline and they aggravate a diaper condition. You should use a Syndet. And there are a lot of Syndets in the market where the pH is about acidic in the range of 5 to 6, which is very baby friendly, and they are the ones that is to be used. Soap is never to be used on the baby. It should be used on the hands, never anywhere else in the body. But you should insist that all those people who pick up your baby need to wash their hands with soap before they pick up their baby. That's more important. So when I ask my mother, what diaper do you use? She tells me one thing. I use a diaper which is good for my child, good for my wallet, and good for the world. I think that should be the take home message. And that's why the cloth diapers yeah, score over the responsible ones. So, sir, there are some questions that have started coming in. So, the first one is uh, as I asked you, how much is the diaper free time that is required in a day? How much, how much time okay. actually? So, whenever you do change diapers, uh -huh. you need to give a break of 10 to 15 minutes. You cuddle, fondle, you have a, an eye-to-eye -eye contact, you have a verbal contact. Now that's the time when you connect with your child. And don't use too much of emollients, oils in the diaper area because again you may create an occlusive problem. Use something which is baby friendly lotion and let it be light and let it be to generate a sort of connectivity and affection with your child. Uh, so how is the impact of climate everything? So we see so many seasons in specifically in Mumbai. Or in I think India. we do very well with cotton. We do very well with cotton. Okay. So I think cotton is great. Okay. Even the disposable diapers that are now coming into the market, they have these soakers and liners, which are now they uh, come out with the statement saying that they have been using biodegradable stuff like starch and cellulose. If you take the cloth diapers, they are made out of bamboo uh, stuff which is an excellent absorbing agent as well as biodegradable. So uh, interesting, there is another question that has come up is while, um, while changing a baby boy's uh, or changing a baby boy's diaper, is it necessary to pull back the, the actual penis and then Please never do that, never do that. Because if you do that, you end up with a condition called paraphimosis, which is an emergency in which you may end up with a circumcision, wherein the foreskin may have to be cut. Now, what is very essential is don't touch the genitals. Fine. And if you find ballooning of the penis when the child is urinating, that is the time you need to see your pediatrician. But don't fiddle with the private parts of the baby. Neither do you touch the penile orifice, 
nor the, the lake we are going to chat. No soaps in that area, no bubble baths. They are all irritants. Too much of syndet also causes drying of that particular area. Yeah, that was one of the questions. And the next question, do you recommend not using soaps in that area? Yeah, okay. copious quantities of water is good enough. But again, there is a lot of debate. Water has a pH which is in the alkaline range and skin pH is uh, acidic. So there are a lot of wipes which have come into the market which are acidic, which have citric acid and malic acid which are used. But when you use a wipe, remember how to use a wipe. It should be from front to back not from back to front because if you do it from back to front you are pushing the perineal organisms into your urinary system. Okay. Yeah, so there is one interesting question that has come up is about swim diapers. So a uh, lot of parents these days start uh, you know, swim, swimming training quite early on. So uh, should, would you recommend using a swim diaper because one of the uh, one of our actual uh, females that is connected to us, that's what as, as long as you understand what you are doing and you feel uh, your perceived convenience fits into it, it's absolutely fine. But you need to know that you have a child who's come out of an aquatic environment. He's come out of an aquatic environment. He adjusts pretty well to the aquatic environment. But sogging, being moist for a very long time, maceration, friction, because of these tight elastic and uh, uh, not a properly fitting diaper, they are the cause of most of the problems. Uh, we used to see a lot of occlusive diaper dermatitis. This used to happen especially in the slum areas where they have plastic underpants and they put these soakers inside and they leave it inside. Uh, Bombay is not a climate where you can afford to do that because you sweat so much and the sweating, the maceration, can really cause a very bad uh, dermatitis, which is actually an irritant dermatitis. Okay. Uh, yeah, See, one of the most important things if you want to prevent any rash in the diaper area is the frequent changing of the diaper area. It's very essential. It's, you know, my, my friend always used to tell me that when she got uh, a little one, she told me it's almost like the WhatsApp. And you keep looking into it even though there is nothing in it because if the diaper is wet, remember, the moment the diaper gets soiled, you need to change it. It's not like a sanitary pad that you put it in the morning and remove it in the evening. It's right. You are putting a diaper because you are safeguarding your interests. You don't want the bed getting dirty. You don't want your kapada getting soiled. That's the reason why you put a diaper. But the problem is the moment the diaper gets soiled. And if there is an interaction between the urine and the stool, that is when all the damage takes place. So fitting is a problem. If the fit is not good, it's a problem. And if it gets soiled, please change it at the earliest. So there is an interesting question about wearing a diaper really tight. Will that actually uh, damage or do some harm to the boy's genetics? Specifically? Yeah, that's what we mentioned right in the beginning that when you have tight pants, you increase temperature diaper. What happens? The temperature goes up. The scrotum is extremely sensitive to temperature changes. So if you have a scrotum which is sensitive to temperature changes, there is a lot of literature on infertility and high temperature in the scrotal area. And the second thing is, if you have a very tight fitting underpant, what happens is also hygiene is a problem. The, the vaginal area is bound to get soiled. And if you have a dermatitis, affecting the labia, the chance of a labial adhesion, that is where the, the two lips of the vagina stick, is pretty common because they already are hormonally deficient. Okay. One of uh, a very, uh, consistent notion that I've seen is using diaper, any kind of a diaper. Does it impact the walking style of the diaper? Oh, yes. Because they are thick and then the walking. Yes, yes. You, you, see, this has been seen with the generic brands. What happens is, when they pass urine, they start sagging. And it's more of an impediment to locomotion. So when you've just started to walk and you're finding it so difficult to balance, you've got a wide base gait, you're hardly able to walk, and then you have something between your legs that makes you even more miserable. Yeah, it's going to add up. So that's where again the advanced cloth diaper scores over the rest. Snugly fitting, doesn't affect the crotch, and makes you feel extremely comfortable. 
So uh, while changing the diaper, are uh, usage of wet wipes is that okay or that that also yeah. you recommend only during travel and when you know you are not at home? Absolutely, it, it should be uh, say like a daycare center or travel, and you buy the branded ones. Don't buy the generic ones because they are scented. Scented can cause allergic reactions. They can cause contact dermatitis. They can cause irritant dermatitis, uh, and there is a whole list of problems with wipes. And if you have a wipe which is not sterile, which has got organisms, you can create a problem there. So wipes is something which we don't recommend. We still prefer the, the bowl of lukewarm water and cotton to clean the bottom. But if you buy the, the wipes of the right brands or the branded ones, wherein you have an acidic pH which is contributed by citric acid, malic acid, and you have some natural antibiotics in there, that's great. Okay, natural antibiotics. Right. Definitely. Uh, so I think uh, that is all with respect to the question. It was a very wonderful session and I'm sure all of us, uh, all of us here and uh, the people who have also joined, they would benefit from uh, the guidance that we provide. Yeah, so, so you go home with a question whether to cloth or to dispose. Okay, and I think uh, convenience is perceived and you need to understand that you should work with a conscience thinking of tomorrow. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you all of you for joining us uh, live on this session. Can I have some questions you want to take? Yeah. What age is ideal for toilet training? What age is ideal for toilet training? See, see, the unfortunate thing today is we are seeing a lot of kids with constipation and uh, that's all related to the diaper. Okay, it's all related to the diaper industry because, see, one of the advantages of the cloth diaper is you experience wetness. You need to experience wetness to be toilet trained. So, so the thing is, that is another uh, problem with the diaper is, uh, we don't think much about toilet train, especially stooling. Uh, by the time we are one and a half years, the grandmother used to keep the baby between the legs and teach the baby. Mm -hmm. We don't do that any longer. We have a diaper and it's so convenient for us. We, we expect the baby that you can pass your shit whenever it is convenient for you. And that's not the right thing to do. Because soon after a feed you get the call, the nature's call. And you miss out on the call, you tend to get constipated. And that's a vicious cycle. So I think anytime after one and a half years, you start making an effort. Okay, and the cloth diapers again score over the disposable ones. And I needed to tell you one thing, that uh, whenever we do give a talk, we have a disclaimer. And the disclaimer says that I'm responsible for all that I talk, but not for all that you understood. That's number one. And number two is, all the views that I have presented here are my views. The most of them have been supported by facts and factuals. Yeah. So that's one interesting question and a mother's uh, worry actually. So, uh, uh, so one of uh, uh, the baby's class teacher actually said that usage of diaper will actually, uh, you know, hamper the baby's confidence in future. So, is, as it, is it a possibility by any means? But what sort of a, what sort of a confidence in what? What, what sort of a confidence? That's so, it's, it just lacks confidence in terms of, you know, walking or... No, not at all. Not, this is convenience. It's that convenience. Is absolute you are born with a diaper and you die with a diaper. See, you have diapers <laughs> for adulthood and we have diapers for the pediatric age group. And one reason why I took up pediatrics is I thought uh, the baby's poop was more acceptable than the adult poop. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's interesting. All right. So, um, so, sir, I, I don't think we have any more questions, but yeah, you leave us with a very important uh, thought, uh, good food for thought that whether to cloth or whether to like this post. So, uh, I also leave all of you with the same message and uh, let, us, let us leave a better future for our next generation and the next generations to come. Thank you again for joining in and uh, do post your likes and comments on the uh, Super Bottoms Facebook page and do follow us for uh, more fluff and more interesting uh, uh, ideas and updates on uh, plot type. Thank you so much.